Looks like a sperma leak. Um, I noticed the radiator leaking uh, when I was down there changing the uh, impact sensor. There was some dripping coming from the other side over there through the uh, radiator support. So I came up here and I poked around and we got a leak. So let's replace it. All right, so first tool you're gonna need, one of these. Okay, not one of these, but. Uh, so you need some basic tools. Uh, these are 10 millimeter. These are 13. You need some pliers to get the hose clamps off. Uh, probably a pick, unless you have the little tool to get the little E-clips out of the uh, quick coupler disconnect things with the E-clips in them. And a uh, screwdriver. So we're going to take the intake off first. And then um, I'm going to take this upper cowl off. Uh, it's got some push pins along this edge here and along the edge of that edge over there. And then the two 10 millimeter uh, bolts and then it should come right out the top. I don't know if we have to take the fan off. I'm going to try to do it without taking the fan off, but I'll have to see what type of space I have between it once we get there. So I get the one hose clamp. that okay now we got the intake off uh, next thing we know is we're gonna pull the hose out hook this and the two bolts off the top of the top fan shroud half and then the four clips that are at the bottom or in the partition I'm going to remove them I don't know if you can see one there's one there there's another one over here same thing on the other side There you go. I'm, I know how to do this, so I don't need to learn how to do it. I didn't need to take it. It's in the off position. I made sure they would loosen up and not break before you started. Now, with them two clips down below, you can use any of these types of tools. Use a little screwdriver, but this, these are what the clips look like down there. So you're gonna have to get under the first edge and kind of pry it up. 
use a screwdriver or whatever you want. You can try these if you can get them in there. These kind of just grab the oops, you grab the edge in there, and then you kind of pull it. And it'll come out. Oh, don't lose it. Or you can use these guys. These guys kind of work. They're a little harder to get in there, but you get a little more control when you're prying it up. And you just kind of get it till it clicks, and then you can actually grab underneath, possibly, and then pull them out. So those are some options. I don't know if you'll be able to get any of those in into the um, the area you have to get them so you know I bet I mean these would probably be best let's see you might have to spin them if you can Shot right up though. You want to make sure you don't lose the center sections. No, so it's a little bit of a different style, but anyway. So that's how you do that. All right, so we got them clips off. Next, we're gonna pull the little push pin out of there. Up, pull the hose back, unhook this one, and slide the shroud back a little bit, and then out the top. There's that. So next thing we're gonna do is I drain the coolant out of it. Now there is no drain on this, so basically you just gotta kind of pull the hose and collect the flow or whatever. So I'm gonna put a like a Tupperware container or something underneath, and we're just gonna pull that bottom hose off um, and drain it into it. And then we have to get the I think these are the transmission cooler or power power steering cooler. Uh, these these cool lines, whichever ones these go to. There's this one, the one down there, then take this hose off and this hose off with the clips. And then you get the one hose here, and then the two two cool lines over here. And then um and these two bolts. And then the radiator should tip back and come out. Um I'm gonna have to see if this this is hooked into a little clip here so you just pull that straight up and that should unhook um, you might <clears throat> have to take the fan off to get the lower shroud off or what i might be able to do is just pull it up a little bit unhook it and then just kind of back it up and move it to the side so it's not it's still in there you might have, have to take it all the way out but so we're going to drain the coolant next all right so we pulled the hose off we got it draining into a bucket right there um, so I should have looked in the package because they give you the little tools to take the clips off. See how they're kind of like, they got the little cutouts for the E-clips in there. So they, basically you stick them in where the clips are and then you rotate them and then you can pull the line out. Um, but something else I noticed is it's got a drain on it. I didn't think it was going to have a drain because they stopped putting drains in them. So I didn't realize that this vehicle actually has a drain in it. So, silly me. Um, I probably wouldn't use the drain unless you're replacing the radiator because if it's got an O-ring in it, sometimes they don't seal right and you gotta change the O-ring. So you might have less headaches by just pulling the hose, but yeah, it's, it's in there in that same orientation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, I already took one, I had to take that bottom hose off because we couldn't get the hose clamp off without removing it. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to take one of these other ones off. So it comes with a clip on there. That clip keeps the E-clip from popping open. So you're gonna pull that back. 
And you're gonna stick the little tool on. Maybe. Rotate it till it kind of goes in, and then give it a little twistle. No, oh, no, twistle one. And that pops the clip out, apparently. And wiggle it out. Bam! These things are awesome. I just took the clip out of the bottom one. You don't have to use these if you don't have them. Okay, that's gonna stay there for a bit. Um, just use the pick. And then you find the edge where the hook is, and then you just pull pull it out and kind of spin it around. Make sure you don't lose it because you probably need it again. And then, uh, then that's how I'll get them out without the tool. So there's that. I'm gonna take this hose clamp off and this hose, and then this hose. And we'll do the same thing on this side over here. And then, um, then I'll come back. All right, so we got all the hoses and everything on hooks. And uh, next thing is to take these two top bolts off, clip it back, and pull it out. So, it kind of looks like I left that lower shroud in there and uh, I just unhooked it and kind of pushed it back a little bit. And uh, yeah, I think it should be fine in there. I don't, I don't see why it would be a problem. It doesn't seem to be, it shouldn't be in the way. You got plenty of room between the fan and the, the upper support here to, should be able to get it out. These were 13 millimeter. So, keep going back a little bit. Hold on a second. Make sure all the hoses are out of the way. Alright. Hold on, let that drain a little. So you want to make sure that you don't have to transfer anything over like these rubber rubber insulators these have them um, I have to put the little inserts in here for the, the, the quick disconnects and what else was there I'm gonna take these bushings and then put them in at the top of the radiator and then we can install this. So I looked at the, this is the way that they are in the radiator I just took out. So I'm putting them back in the same way. Oops. No. So Look at the instructions. This just shows you how to how to remove the lines. And that just shows you how to remove the lines in a different language. So I'll take these guys. Uh, Looks like two of them seal with thread locker on the on the things, and then two of them have O-rings. So you put a little little oil on the the O-ring, and you just put them in and tighten them down. You don't want to go super tight because they seal on the O-ring, so they don't have to be cranked down. And they feel like they're aluminum, so they're probably not very strong either. 
And then these guys. The small ones got a little thread lock on them. Or not thread lock, but sealant. It looks like a really crappy job. There's burrs and crap all over this thing. Yeah, that looks that looks sweet, doesn't it? It did a good job on this one. Oh yeah. Nice and nice and burry. I'm hoping this even seals. Like that. Oh. No, it's got a flare, an inverted flare. Alright, so that's where it actually seals. It's silly me. So we'll get some wrenches or such and tighten this down. Alright, so we got everything transferred over. You know, it's just going back together. Okay, now let's make sure when we're putting it in we don't hit anything with the pins. Um, I'm going to put my side in first. One of the yours came out first. Radiator hose on first because that's the toughest clamp to get back on, especially if we put the other stuff in. I usually try to get the hose clamps exactly back in the same grooves they were when you took them off. So they put the same pressure on. So if you got them where there's a groove, so you can see how there's a there's an imprint on there. So I try to set them right where the imprint was. But if you get them high on one side, that might push differently because you're pushing here instead of in the groove. So uh, it might not make a difference, but that's what I try to do. that cool line back in, put the clip back on, same thing with the top one, well, not our clip but our little plastic, oh, I guess retainer thing, um, so, so we gotta get that side in first, but we gotta put the hoses back in, in the holder, so on this side over here there's a, there's a clip that holds the, I think the transmission cooler lines, to the plastic shroud and I, I open up the clip so we can get them out so I can move them around a little easier. So we're gonna put those in and um so 
there's that clip on the, right there. We took them out because it was, we couldn't really move this around very well. And then I pulled these up out of the way. So this one goes on the bottom and then that one goes on the top. And uh, I'll plug those back in. And then we gotta just hook the shroud here into that clip there. I have to push those lines in and we should be good with the boil with that anyway and then uh then you can put the two this line back on the middle one and then this line here on the top one tighten up our bolts and keep moving on all right so we're gonna put that bottom one in first so you might have to wiggle it a little bit basically you just push it in Try to twist it side to this, side to side. Don't, don't push back there. Push where your, your, your right hand is, because it's got to go in straight. Is it done? Yes. Huh? Hold on a second. Is it in? Mm -hmm. It's not. Here, hold up. You do some filming. got to push it and then put your clip back on there's one so let's hook, hook that over there where that goes Can, hook the shroud over there where that goes in a little in a little groove See the, the lines, see where the clip is. So we'll push these lines back in where they go. That's that. I think. All right. So is that, and now we'll put the top cowl on. So next we're gonna put this middle hose on and then this top hose, the, the bleeder line or whatever it is. But first we'll tighten up the radiator. Yeah, I got the wrench. Hmm? You need a 13. So we'll put them hoses on. Grab that middle one and the top one. Another one? Hmm? Yeah, there's that little one in the middle. The uh the air bleeder for the engine goes to the middle. See the yeah. Yeah. Yep. Now oh. make sure it's kinda of routed the same way it's it was routed. Yeah, make sure there's no twist in it. It looks good. So 
So we'll spring them clamps back open and uh, then I'll put the cowl in and the clips. Two clips here and then two clips over there and uh, the two, two bolts on the top. And put our upper hose on and then we'll fill a little coolant. Or actually we'll put the intake back on and then we'll fill a little coolant. Alright, so we got everything else hooked back up. Um, when you're filling it back up, the the line on the edge of the bottle here says fill cold. So you're gonna fill it up till it's here. I usually go a little bit over just so I can see it. Doesn't make a big difference. Um, so when you're filling it, fill it up to like here. Are these things? No, that's that's just a casting in the, in the mold. Um, so you're gonna want to use your own flavor of coolant. Uh, I still use the Dex Cool because as long as you replace it and and change it out, it's not really a big deal. Um, if you just drive forever and you've got 10 year old Dex Cool in there, it's gonna be a problem. Um, so yeah, and. The new Ford Motocraft Orange is actually a blend of Dex Cool. So if anyone's afraid of Dex Cool, it's pretty much in Ford and Ford and uh, Chevy. So anyway, we're gonna fill that up to that line, and then we're gonna run it, kind of bleed it out, and then uh, top it off again. So that's how you change a radiator uh, an 03 GMC Sierra. 2500 HD uh, should be the same thing as a Chevy Silverado. Uh, so, hope that can help somebody. Thanks for watching.